This is the model number 100 PFB. It's a small feedback centric analog video synthesizer. It's very similar to the VGS 35 and VGS FB that I built recently, just in a uh, more condensed package. So on the back, we've got our main VGA output. We've got two composite video outputs, one for your main out and one for a monitor. We've got an audio input with on and off. We've got a 2.1 millimeter power jack. This takes five volt power, either through USB or an AC adapter, as well as our main power switch. So let's go ahead and get power hooked in, video hooked in, and pull up our output. So let's go ahead and power this thing on. And the first thing we'll see is that it's running at a resolution of 1024 by 768 at a refresh rate of 60 Hertz. Now to go over the controls here, we've got a mix for red, green, and blue. So if I turn that all off, then we lose each of those channels. And we've also got pulse buttons. These go from off to full on for each of the color channels. Let's dial these all back up. We've got an LFO with rate, shape, and depth. And this is our power for the LFO. So let's turn it on. And this LED is going to blink with our rate. And if I want to send the LFO to the red, green, or blue channel, those correspond to these three switches. So let's send it to the green channel. And then if we dial the green out a little bit, then we'll see that the green channel is now flashing. Now over here, we've got six buttons. These correspond to image shift up and down, as well as left and right, a button for the menu, and a button to adjust the zoom or the crop. So the first thing that I'll do after turning this on is typically I'll want to go into the menu and make a few adjustments that we can't make with these panel mount controls. The first of which being saturation. And we use left and right buttons to adjust these menu items with right increasing the saturation. And now we're already getting some great feedback looks. And as I said, we can use these buttons to start moving the image around. And we can use this button to adjust the crop. Now the next thing we might want to do is go back into the menu and turn this OSD background off and adjust the hue. So because we're working with just a raw signal being fed into itself, if we start shifting the hue here, we're not just shifting uh, the color of a static image, we're telling the feedback loop to continuously change color with each iteration. So we're going to start seeing either more or less bands, we're going to start seeing different color palettes, and it's a, it's a good way to start experimenting with color. So we're getting kind of a pinkish pastel type look. If I maybe pull the green out a bit. Though again, because we are shifting the hue, green is no longer green. So you kind of have to play around to figure out exactly where you are in the color space. So up here we've also got four switches. These correspond to uh, some points on a uh, video buffer as well as a video RAM. Um, and this just short circuits a few spots and they'll allow you to cause some interesting glitchy effects. I'm personally fond of this one. You can also combine them. This one right here I've labeled with a, a bit of blue heat shrink just because this one will require a reset. This alters the mode that it's running in and it can be a little finicky, but what it does once it's been engaged is uh, it causes the image to start quantizing portions of it into little quadrants, which can make it a bit harder to get feedback out of. But if you can get it, the feedback that you get will look a little a little pixelated. But again, it's just a little more work to dial in feedback with that. And again, also, once that's been engaged, to go back to normal, it just requires a reset. Go ahead and dial the saturation back up. Okay. 
So then up here, these buttons correspond to another portion of the inside of this that has a separate menu. Um, most of these aren't important to worry about, but these three uh, correspond to menu for that section. So as you see, we have some adjustments on this other portion of the feedback cycle, similar to uh, this menu over here. Um, I typically will leave brightness and contrast at 50, which is the default saturation I bump up to 100. And this is another hue shift to play with. So if we start shifting hue here, and obviously we can start diving into additional palettes that we can't get with just this menu. Make a few more adjustments. Play with the RGB. Maybe cut the LFO on. And there we have a nice look. So now we've got a nice feedback look going. Uh, we've got a little variation in color coming in with the LFO on the green channel. And typically, if you find a spot that you like that's generating feedback, you don't have to do a whole lot. It'll keep generating. And one thing we can do that I like is always go up to one of the corners and then small movements are gonna make big sweeping changes. And again, you can always be playing with the hue shift to dive into different palettes. Adjusting the RGB. Sometimes very small adjustments make big changes, so you gotta be careful. And these glitch switches are uh, also useful for kind of jogging it and giving the feedback something to grab onto. So now the last thing to go over would be that audio input. Let's go ahead and hook some audio in, make sure it's on. And if I were to play some audio, you're going to see lines on the image start reacting in accordance to the audio. And again, that's also going to then be feeding back into itself. Here's that raw signal. Now there are a few more things that we can do here rather than just pipe in some music. So if you're at all familiar with analog video synthesis uh, with stuff like the LZX system, you'll understand that we can use oscillators in the video space just like we can in the audio space. So. For example, if I were to feed it a 60 hertz sine wave, then we should see that oscillator represented as a scan line here. And if I adjust the fine tuning of it, either up or down, then we can get that scan line to move around. And then uh, this is being fed into the green channel right now. So this is just one way that we may try adding some variation in here. If I were to up that to about 120 hertz, we'll see two lines, etc., etc. We can change the shape of the wave. Here's a square wave. We can layer multiple oscillators at the same time. So that's just one way to think about using that audio port. Now, one other thing that we might do with that input jack is feed it something from uh, something like a signal generator so we can give it something with a bit more fidelity and precision. So if I were to hook in this small signal generator and feed it a sine wave, right now it's at zero hertz, so let's bring that up to 60. And once again, we should see the same type of thing. But with this, we can also get into much higher ranges, which will allow us to get into lines that are not just horizontal. 
due to the way that these signals try and wrap around. I think I've found sweet spots around 145k for diagonal lines, so I'll go up there. And then of course we can dial in the exact frequency. And this allows us to, you know, really play with uh, play with shapes a bit more. So that's about it for this build. If you are curious to learn more about this and other things that I've made in the past, feel free to check out my website, glikes.net. And this is also a place where you can get in touch with any questions you might have, or if you're interested in having something commissioned. Uh, this particular video synth was custom built for Adam Kane. Uh, he does visuals over at the Vaporwave label 100% Electronica during their live streams. So if you want to see more of this thing in action, feel free to check out 100% Electronica over on Twitch. Uh, thanks for watching this, and I will see you again in the next one.